Hey everyone, welcome to the Radiology Scholar Certificate Program. My name is Ben Brendamore, and today we're going to talk about approach to renal ultrasound. The most common indication for the use of renal ultrasound is in the evaluation of hydronephrosis. Some other potential applications are um, in the evaluation of polycystic kidney disease, renal cyst, acute renal vein thrombosis, renal cancer, renal failure, and renal trauma. And some of the advantages of ultrasound over CT are a shorter length of stay, lower cost, and an improved safety profile. When scanning the right kidney, the probe should be placed in the mid-axillary line at the level of T4 through T6, with the probe mo marker initially facing towards the patient's head. After the kidney is identified, the transducer should then be rotated slightly until the ultrasound beam is positioned in between the ribs to avoid any acoustic shadowing from the ribs. And then when scanning the left kidney, the probe should be placed in a similar location as the right kidney, but often slightly more posterior and slightly more cephalad relative to the right side. Once the optimal view is obtained, it is important to evaluate the renal anatomy. The renal parenchyma will be more hypoechoic, while the renal sinus is relatively hyperechoic due to prominent fatty deposits within it. Further, the renal parenchyma is usually hypoechoic in comparison to the spleen or the liver, which can both be used as acoustic windows um, when you're obtaining the image. And then within the renal medulla, you can see um, the renal pyramids often as small spheroid structures with ill-defined borders. CT scan is considered to be the modern gold standard imaging test in the evaluation of urolithiasis. Multiple studies have shown that CT scan has excellent accuracy in this diagnosis, and it has the added advantage of not requiring any intravenous contrast. contrast. And then also, CT allows for visualization of other abdominal structures that could be responsible for the patient's symptoms revealing possible alternative diagnoses. However, CT is scrutinized due to its associated increased cost, radiation dose, and frequency of in incidental findings. And this is particularly a concern and relevant considering that patients with urolithiasis have high recurrence rates. When compared to CT scan, ultrasound has only modest accuracy for the direct detection of urinary calculi themselves, but can easily detect the sequelae of an obstructing stone in the form of hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis is visualized by progressively enlarging anechoic areas that develop within the renal sinus. The degree of hydronephrosis has not been shown to be predictive of renal dysfunction, but studies have shown that the degree of hydronephrosis correlates with the overall size of the stone. There are no objective measurements available for point-of-care physicians to reliably distinguish between different grades of hydronephrosis. Instead, subjective descriptions should be used to define the different grades of hydronephrosis. In mild hydronephrosis, you can see blunting of the calyceal fornices and large calyces, but easily identified papillae. In moderate hydronephrosis, you see obliteration of the papillae with rounding of the calyces. And in severe hydronephrosis, you can see extreme calyceal ballooning and thinning of the renal cortex. Some other subjective measures are used. Um, one of them is, the, is from the Society of Fetal Urology called the SFU system which is commonly used by radiologists. One possible mimic of hydronephrosis on ultrasound is in a patient who has prominent hilar vessels. And the best way to distinguish between these is by using your color Doppler, where you'll see um, activity on the color Doppler in a patient with prominent hilar vessels, whereas um, in hydronephrosis, you'll see 
absence of that activity. Renal cysts are frequently encountered during renal ultrasound. In fact, some references report that the prevalence of renal cysts is as high as 50% in the general population, with frequency increasing with patient age. Cysts are classically visualized as well-defined circular thin-walled structures filled with anechoic fluid and good transmission of sound. On the right, you can see some common features seen in benign versus complex cysts. This is a chart you'll commonly run into when studying for step one and step two. But benign cysts commonly have a round or oval in shape, thin-walled, don't have calcifications or septae, whereas complex cysts can have irregular contours, thick-walled calcifications, and many septations. If a cystic renal mass is encountered, a classification scheme developed by Bosniak can aid in appropriate disposition of your patient. In a Bosniak 1 cyst, there are no septations, and when you see this cyst, there's a close to 0% chance of malignancy. In a Bosniak 2 cyst, there are a few 1 to 3 septae that are less than or equal to 2 millimeters in width. And this also has a close to zero risk of malignancy. In a Bosniak 2F, one or more 3 millimeter septes or many greater than or equal to four septations that are less than or equal to two millimeters. And these patients have a 5% risk of malignancy. And in a Bosniak 3, there are one or more greater than or equal to four millimeter thick and, or regular septae. And these patients have a 50% chance of malignancy. And in the Bosniak 4, there's one or more enhancing nodules. And in these patients, there's a 90% chance of malignancy. So if the cysts are found to be minimally complex with thin septae, thin calcifications, non-enhancing, and less than 3 centimeters in size, they requ require no further workup. If the cysts do not meet this criteria, further workup is warranted, as they are considered high risk for malignancy. And if the diagnosis is unclear, you may want to get a CT or uro urography to better visualize the cyst. On this slide, you can see some examples of what a Bosniak 1, Bosniak 2, Bosniak 2F, Bosniak 3, and Bosniak 4 cysts look like on ultrasound. A cystic kidney disease that you may run into while scanning patients in the emergency department is adult polycystic kidney disease, or APKD. And this will manifest as enlarged kidneys with multiple cysts of variable shape and size. And APKD is defined as the presence of multiple renal cysts. And if there are greater than three to four cysts are encountered, the patient warrants farther urologic workup. Ultrasound is not the gold standard test to evaluate the kidney in the setting of trauma, but it can be useful in the diagnostic workup, especially if there is technical challenges with obtaining timely contrasted CT scan. The literature surrounding non-contrasted ultrasound shows only moderate, modest accuracy. A study of 164 patients with blood abdominal trauma and suspicion of renal injury who received an ultrasound as well as a contrasted CT scan found that ultrasound identified 66 of 103 renal injuries. Another retrospective study of 37 renal injuries found that ultrasound identified 22% of, of renal injuries. The sonographic assessment of renal trauma may have a higher accuracy in pediatric patients and may be more sensitive when the renal injury is more severe. A retrospective review of 76 pediatric patients and 152 kidneys found that the sensitivity of ultrasound alone to detect grade two through five injuries ranged from 79% to 100% with a negative predictive value between 97 and 100%. 
And lastly, contrast enhanced ultrasound appears to be more accurate than non-contrast enhanced, enhanced ultrasound. A single centered study found that non-contrasted ultrasound identified 11 of 22 renal injuries, whereas contrast enhanced ultrasound identified 20 of 22 renal injuries. And then here you see a clip. And in this clip, you see an example of a renal laceration with blood inside Gerota's fascia. This is the kidney and you don't see any cysts or anything out of the ordinary. However, you do see this mixed density structure inside of Gerota's fascia. And this is indicative of a renal laceration.